Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to open a form to a new record, but still be able to browse the other records in the form using Microsoft Access. Okay, one of my pet peeves when you open a form is it starts on the first record. Now, if you're looking up data, that's fine. But sometimes, depending on the form, if I go to open the contacts form, for example, I don't want to be sitting on the first one. I want to be sitting here on a new one, ready to type in a new record. It's, it's more likely that I'm going to be typing in stuff into the contacts field, right? The contacts history, what we talked about, you know, information about our, our meeting, that kind of stuff. It's less likely that I want to go back through and scroll. But I don't want to open this guy in data entry mode, right? I did a whole separate video on data entry mode. If you go into the forms properties, right? Click here, go to data. There's data entry. If you set that to yes, this becomes a data entry form, which means now you can't go back through and look at the previous records. Here's a video I did on that a little while ago. And this is good if you have a form that you just want to give to someone who only does data entry and never needs to go back and look at the previous records. So we don't want that for this one because I want the user to be able to go back and see the previous records but if this thing has got you know 5,000 contacts in it I want I don't want to have to come down here and click on new all the time I want to just start there okay so how do we do that well first things first this will require two lines of VB code just two if you've never done any VBA programming before go watch this video don't be scared of VBA it's really easy you only need to learn a couple of commands and you can make your databases a whole lot more powerful Watch this video, it's 20 minutes long, it's free, it's on my website, on my YouTube channel. Go watch this now and then come on back. Okay, so close the contact form. This, by the way, is my tech help free template. This is on my website, you can grab a copy if you want to. Now I'm going to go into the button that I made for opening up the contacts form. Right click, go to build event. Okay, here's my code builder. Now here's the line of code that opens up the contact form, right? Do command open form contact F where the customer ID equals the current customer ID. So in other words, open up the contact form and show only the contacts for this customer. If you want to learn how I built this database, by the way, go watch this video. It shows you how I put the customer form together, the contacts form, and all that good stuff. Okay, so after the form is open, I need to issue a command to go to a new record. All right, and here's what that looks like. Do command dot go to record and then we're going to go ac data form that guy all right comma what's the name of the form contact f comma and then i went ac new rec that's it right pretty straightforward do command go to record you're going to go to a record on a form because you could use this on different types of objects too tables queries whatever the name of the form you're working with is the contact form, the one I just opened. And then where do you want to go? I want to go to a new record. All right, save it. I'm going to close that, close that, reopen the customer form, and then watch this. Contacts, boom. Now it's sitting right there, ready to enter a new record. But I can still go back through and scroll up these if I want to. Now, what if you want to also control what field it goes to? Because the default I got it going to right here is the description field. Let's take a look at design view here. All right, that's description. I know it says notes, but that's just, let, let's more correctly put description here. Okay, that's the description field, which is short text. We got the contact date, and we got the big notes field down the bottom here. All right, let's say, for example, you want it to go to contact date. Now, I know I have this set as not a tab stop. So the first tab stop is this one, but just for the sake of class, let's say I want to force it to go to contact date. Okay, so close this, go back into here, design view. Okay, go to the context button again. And then we're going to issue another command, do command dot go to control. And then what control do you want to go to on the active form? So the active form is only just open and we move to a new record. What's the name of the control you want to jump to? All right, contact date save it all right let's close this close this again open it up open up contacts boom and now it's sitting on contact date see that isn't that pretty cool you can control what form opens what record you go to what control you go to or what field you go to 
You ready for some bonus stuff? You want a little, little bonus stuff? What's that you say? It's a bonus round! Let's get ready to play! <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Okay, so what I like to do, okay, what I like to do is I like to have it when this form opens, I like to put the focus down here. Go to a new record, drop down here, okay? And then when I type in some stuff, this is just a notes field here. If I don't specify a description, I take like the first 50 characters of that and put it up there. Right? You ready? You ready? Here we go. Okay, I'm going to hit escape. Cancel out of that. So the first thing is I want to go to a new record. I want to jump the focus down to notes. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go back into here. Design view. Right click. Build event. Change this to notes. All right, save that. That's the name of that field. Test it. Context. Boom. Okay, I'm sitting down here on notes. So if I just type in some stuff now, notice it added a new record up top. Okay, but if I hit tab... All right, and come up here, for example. All right, there's nothing in there. It's blank. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put an after update in this guy. That's going to say, if this is blank, if it's null, then put the first 50 characters up there. All right, so there's three different things I'm going to use. Is null, if then, and after update. I got videos for all those things. All right, go watch this one. Is null, if you don't know what null is. Here's a video on how to write if then statements, right? If something, then do this. And here's a video on the after update event to do something after a field is updated. Again, these are all free videos are on my website. Go watch these if you've never seen any of these things before. Okay, so in here, let's design the contact field. Let's go to the properties for the notes field. Go to events, find after update, dot, dot, dot. All right, code builder. I'm, I'm using my travel laptop right now, so I haven't turned this off. Normally, I turn the choose builder off. Hit OK. All right. What we're going to say here is if is null description, then description equals the left of what string notes, comma, how many characters do you want? 50. And, and if. And I forgot one thing. You need to know what the left function is, don't you? Guess what? Got a video for that too, right? Left, right, mid, length, and string in my string functions video. So anyways, after the notes is updated, we're going to take a look at the description field. If it's null, if it's blank, we're going to set description equal to the left 50 characters of the notes field. And then when we're all done with that, we're going to say me.refresh, which basically says save the record to the table. Okay? All right, you ready? And yeah, I got a refresh video somewhere. It's just that's Okay, save that. <laughs> ready? Contacts. Oop, I moved that. Let's put that back over here. Save it there. One more time. Ready? Contacts. All right. So my focus now, notice, is sitting down there in notes right down here. All right. This is some cool stuff. And I'm going to press tab. Boom. Look at that. And it saved it up there in the description. And the reason why we want that text up in the description is because I could come down here and I could type in the Magna Carta, right? I could type in paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of stuff. But there's a reason why we want a description field and a notes field. The description field gives you a brief summary of what this is about, right? Like came in for an interview, but you could put all the information about the interview down here. But there are some limitations to long text fields, sorting, searching, that kind of stuff, right? So you want a description field that's short text in addition to a big, big, big long text field that you can put whatever you want in. So that's why I like to take. I like to say, hey, if the user hasn't specified a description, then just put the you know the beginning of that in there. It's kind of like what Microsoft Word does. If you type in a document and go to save it, it guesses what the title, what the file name should be, right, based on the beginning of what you typed. Same kind of thing here. Okay, so if I come back up here, for example, and I go, you know, this was some old stuff. Boom, it puts it up there. But if I come in here and change this now and hit tab. Notice it didn't change the description because it already had something in it, hence the is null. Okay? If you like this kind of stuff, this is the stuff I teach in my developer lessons. Right I got right now I got 40 of them. It's, uh, it's September of 2022. I, I try to make one or two new ones every month. And unlike my fast tips and tech help videos, I don't make it jump around a lot. Like today, I'm like, okay, you got to know this, you got to know that, you got to know this. In my developer series, I start from the beginning, I start from the basics, I start from scratch, and I, I walk you through stuff in the order that you should learn it. Okay, we start with the basics, we move on, we move on up, right? 
So if you've never done any programming before, you want to learn how to program, you see how powerful you can make your databases with just the stuff I show in these, in these fast steps, right? Start with developer one and work your way up. This is also the kind of stuff I do in my extended cut tech help videos too. So if you like little programming tips and stuff, consider joining my tech help memberships. Gold members, for example, get access to all my stuff in the code vault as well. Lots and lots of code in there. Hundreds of videos to watch. Okay, so there's your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.